Yo, what's going on guys? So I got a little uh, Madden 25 on the Xbox One going here. And right off the bat you'll notice it does look, I don't know, 10 times better than the previous generation. It might be a bit hard to tell on YouTube because of the processing. But my favorite new feature would have to be the War in the Trenches feature. Uh, it makes it kind of like a real life pocket, you know, like when the quarterback drops back. It's quite a bit better than how it used to be. It was kind of just a line in front of you and people would break through. Now you could kind of step up. And I like that because in football, you should always watch the line. You know, a lot of people just stare at the quarterback and stuff. But the line is where the game is being won and lost. So of all the new features, that would definitely be my favorite. But the real purpose of this video is to... It, it's like a follow-up to my one about two months ago when I was asking you guys what your favorite team was and I was discussing how my favorite team is the Bears but uh, I want to talk about expectations and reality like uh, what were you guys expecting for your favorite teams going into this season see now that's the beauty of the NFL with the whole draft drama that goes on training camp every season the hype machines for each team has the fans going and thinking, possible Super Bowl, you know? With the exception of a couple of teams that are clearly rebuilding. But the expectations are always sky high when a season starts. And then, you know, a couple weeks in, it comes crashing down to reality. Now, let's take the Chicago Bears, for example. That's my favorite team. Um, what, what I was expecting was, you know, for a... They're good defense to continue, you know. Everyone thinks Bears, they think great defense, obviously. Whoa, was I off. Wow. We're talking historically bad defense. Like, not just bad for this year. We're talking one of the worst defenses in NFL history, possibly. There's still a couple weeks left in the season. I don't see them turning it around. They're giving up, like... Any rusher could come in and get 200 yards on them. Granted, they had quite a few injuries on defense. They got guys playing that were lifting furniture a week ago. But uh, you know what? You gotta even with the injuries, you gotta play through it. Every team gets injuries. Yeah, it happens to be all their pro ball players. But no, <laughs> this is a really bad defense. Oh, the line, the linebackers safeties, everything about it is just atrocious. So I was, certainly was not expecting that. On the offensive side, they got a new coach, Mark Trussman. I was thinking, all right, you know, he's good with quarterbacks, he's supposed to, supposedly an offensive genius. I was thinking, all right, take a usually poor offense and, and make them, you know, a, a top 15. No, they're doing freaking great. I believe they're number two in scoring in the NFL as of this week. Uh, that as a Bears fan, is very weird. So, all of a sudden we got polar opposites of what goes on every other season. Normally defense great, offense, uh, you know, run the ball, get three yards, a couple times, you punt. No, all of a sudden the offense is lighting it up with backup quarterback Josh McCown in, who actually, uh, he's pretty awesome. That guy, I got a lot of respect for him. He just goes out there and plays, doesn't talk trash anything. But... Yeah, so the offense is doing excellent. Defense, world's worst, possibly. Although the Cowboys might be even worse. So, oh, and when it comes to players, like, who who were you hoping that would have a breakout season on your team, you know? I was hoping Alshon Jeffrey would get the ball more often because, you know, when he was drafted two years ago, I was pretty excited because this guy dominated in college. Absolutely dominated. And then he got some negative reports about being overweight and stuff. Guy shows up and plays. Last season he got a little injured, didn't get the ball too much. But from all accounts, he was going to be great in the NFL. He just he has the body, he has the leaping ability, the hands. And look at him, he's lighting it up this year. So I'm very pleased with how he turned out. And also the offensive line that went from one of the worst in the league to pretty pretty freaking good. I think Kyle Long is an absolute animal at offensive guard. And I was hoping on the defensive side that uh, Shea McClellan would come out and try to not be a potential bust. But aside from that Green Bay game, and he knocked Aaron Rodgers out, which, you know, 
no one wishes injury, but it it helps when Aaron Rodgers isn't on the field. <laughs> but uh, he certainly, I would say, he is a bust. He gets absolutely mauled in the run game. And besides his spin move and a little speed, he doesn't do much against the pass. So that's definitely a blunder. And absolutely nobody on defense stepped up. And that's how the season really turned out from here. There's some terrible losses. But it, the NFL is still, every week is ridiculous. It's so exciting to watch, and that's what I love about it. So let me know what expectations you had for your team or your players, and what the reality turned into. Like I said, there's still a couple weeks left. You never know what's going to happen. Once cold weather rolls in, some teams step it up, some just lay down. So let me know what you think, and uh, let's keep this to a troll-free zone. You know, who cares what team people like? I, I like to discuss the NFL as a whole. It's fun to me. Hopefully you guys do too. And I'll see you. Enjoy the rest of the game. Third down now. From the gun. Trying to work that left side. Deflected away. This defense you're playing against, they're pretty good. So it's fourth down near midfield. Punt the football. Harris from the 17. He stacked up at that point. Tony Romo will take it right from the center. Now first and ten. DeMarco Murray gets the handoff. He's going to be swallowed up behind the line. Got to give the defense some credit. On first down, there's so many things the offense can do. They were ready for that play, and they stopped it. And here we have second down. They hand it off to the running back. And he's able to get out to the 34-yard line. So that's it for the second quarter. Halftime is coming up. We'll have a little first-half analysis as we continue on EA Sports after this. He'll kneel here. No reason to try his luck on the return. So the offense off the touchback will begin at the 20. Williams, a receiver in the slot. The third quarter begins with this play. Five, maybe six out of that. I think the best thing to say about that play is just it, it gained a few yards, so that's what you do. All plays don't score. Sometimes you just want to pick up a couple yards. Coming up, second down. Let's go. Romo's going to take the snap from the shotgun. Getting sacked. When you're the quarterback and you see a blitz, you got to know you got to drop back, look at a receiver, and let it go. No hesitation is allowed. He hesitates, and the defense gets the sack. Romo's got it in the gun. He'll fire it out to the left. Now they take the football onto the opponent's side of the field. When you pick up first downs against the defense, they will get tired. That time, nice job by the offense getting the first down, even though they're losing here in the game. First and 10, and the give now to DeMarco Murray. They've got him behind the line of scrimmage. When you make play calls like that, you're not going to win many football games. That was a terrible call here on first down. Defense lining up here late in this one, trying to hold on to the lead. The final quarter begins with this snap. He had no time to get set. This defense can pressure the quarterback. There's no doubt about it. They did this time, and it results in another incompletion. Witten split out wide on the left. Third down and 13. And they sack the quarterback. This satisfying defensive replay is brought to you by Snickers. Hungry for victory? Snickers satisfies. Underneath, 
They failed to convert, and now a change of possession. Well, I'll just say this, Jim. When you're a gambling football team, you're willing to go for it on fourth down, even though you're losing in the second half and you don't get it. You just got to deal with a little bit of adversity and hope your defense can go out there and stop the other team's offense. First and 10, the handoff to Matt Forte. And that gains a few. They immediately call for a timeout. It's now second down. Just a quick drop back. Looking to the right side and throwing. They call for the timeout to stop the clock. Third down on the way. Forte's handed the football. The Cowboys call a timeout here. They have zero timeouts remaining. They're able to move the chains after that last run. Looking for an open receiver on the right. Gains 15. The Bears will use a timeout here. They'll talk it over before running a play on first down. That reception gave them the first down. Challenging the defenders to the right side. And the offense will call the timeout. After the long game, let's see what they do here. From the gun, he'll fire it out to the left. And that ball nearly picked off, but he dropped it. Nice situation here for the offense. They're winning the football game. Now they're in the red zone. Let's see if they can come up with a play that fools the defense. That second down Let's coming go. up. Matt Forte. Wow, what a time. Touchdown near the end of this one. Well, that touchdown just put the icing on the kick, Jim. Whatever you want to say, because now the lead's too big. Not enough time for the other team to come back. Great job by the offense. This one's not leaving the end zone. They come to the line, and it's first down. Tight ends in motion here. Robo's going to take it from the gun. And he's taken down. Here we go. Quarters formation here for the defense. Let's go. Tony Romo is going to take it from the shotgun. The defense comes up with yet another sack. Williams going to get set in the slot for this snap. So that's a two-point safety for the defense. going to be taken down at about the 33, maybe the 34-yard line. Two tight ends on the field here. First down and 10. Play action fake. Throws to the right. Here comes the training staff as we've got a player down on the field. Well, they're teaching all these guys in the NFL, don't hit high and... We might be seeing more of this, lower body injuries, because of the defensive players, they're learning. Hit them lower. Won't get any flags thrown that way. Always good to have these types of runs. Yeah, it's not a first down, but it sends a message. It shows everybody that you can run it when you want to, and also it opens up so many other things for your offense. Matt Forte gets it here. Well, we're anxious to hear the full story on that injury. Let's go down to Danielle Bellini with the story. That's going to do it. The clock hits zero, and this game has come to an end.
Phil, before we go, how about a little chat about how much this win means? Well, you know, Jim, let's look at it this way. It was just a nice win. It, it keeps your confidence up, and it just gives you a little energy to, uh, to go out next week.